I just read an article by Ron Guieri called Science Without Laws of Nature, and in it, at the very end, uh, he makes some interesting but very brief comments uh, about modality, uh, where he says that under certain conditions we can sample the possibilities uh, of real systems. So, um, I guess just to give a bit of background to explain what he what he's talking about here, uh, consider a scientific model, like uh, a model of a harmonically driven pendulum. So, we might use this model to represent the motion of a pendulum on a grandfather clock. Um, this model will tell us that the period of the pendulum is proportional to the square root of the length. And obviously there are many possible periods corresponding to many possible lengths, right? Many of these possibilities uh, may never be actualized. Uh, so, you know, we, it might tell us that the, if the length is x, then the period will be y, but we never set the length to be x. Um, so, you know, that, that's fairly standard stuff. Now, somebody who's an anti-realist about modality, like Bas van Frassen, um, so, so van Frassen would say that modality is a feature of the model, not a feature of the world. Uh, and, and of course, van Frassen is an anti-realist in, in general, uh, and he would say that possible states are on par with unobservable entities like electrons. Uh, possible states are just another type of entity that is constructed in scientific models that are designed to save the phenomena that we actually observe. The point of a scientific model is to capture the actual observable regularities. That's all. And, and you know, Van Frassen obviously is agnostic about whether or not unobservables like electrons exist. Um, similarly, he thinks we can we can just say that the possible states of affairs. Um, are simply you know, features constructed in, in the models, uh, but they don't correspond to anything in the world. Now, Gieri wants to give a realist account of modality. Um, and so what he says is, well, the model uh, suggests that various possibilities may exist in the real system, or at least it represents the real system as having various possible states of affairs. And by manipulating the real system, we can sample the possible states that the model suggests exists in the system. Uh, and if, these, uh, if the states that we sample match the predictions of the model, this gives us reason to believe that the model does accurately capture the modal structure of the overall system. So let's say, for instance, that the actual length of the, pen of the pendulum is A uh, and the period is B. The model tells us that a merely possible length is C uh, with the corresponding possible period of D. Well, then, if I then take the actual pendulum and I make the length C, uh, I will be sampling the possibilities of the real system. And if the period turns out to be D, that will uh, confirm the conclusion, uh, that, that will you know, conf confirm the model. It, it will confirm that the uh, modal structure of the system, that the structure of the possibilities in the, in the system is roughly that uh, which is suggested in the model. Um, so, I mean, this is, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's an interesting account because it makes uh, modality um, sort of familiar and safe, as it were. It, it, it kind of removes the epistemological and metaphysical mystery uh, from modality. I mean, uh, obviously, traditionally, you know, modality is is really quite quite baffling, it raises a lot of uh, puzzling questions, but if we can say that actually under conditions like this, you know, a real system, we just sample possibilities and that's what justifies modal claims, you know, and that, that's what reveals the modal structure of the world, it's just we, we literally sample the possibilities, uh, then modality becomes really quite straightforward, it becomes quite straightforward and, and familiar. Um, so it's an interesting account, but there are, I, I think, some, some questions that can be raised about it. So, so first of all, can this account be extended to, uh, to sort of modality in general? I mean, can, can we uh, account for all of our modal claims in this kind of way? So consider a claim like uh, Hitler could have won the war. Uh, well, the war wasn't a controlled experiment, uh, nor did we have any sophisticated, sophisticated model of the war built on you know, strict laws. Uh, it, it wouldn't really make sense to say that anything that happened in the war involved sampling possibilities from a you know, law-governed model. Um, so in the case of, of something like a pendulum, you know, we have this 
sophisticated model built on a on on the on the basis of very very well confirmed theory uh, built on the basis of certain laws, um, and that model makes very specific predictions, uh, and then you know about you know that model kind of gives a very specific space of possibilities, let's say, uh, and then we can manipulate the real system to see if it matches what the model predicts. Uh, but nothing like that is going on in, you know, in, in, in something with something like Hitler could have won the war. I mean, and with you know, many of our everyday uh, modal claims. A second question about, about this account of modality is, what exactly is it that we are supposed to be sampling? So, I mean, let's say that I, uh, I conduct a, a poll uh, ahead of a general election. Um, you know, I want, I want to try to predict how people are going to, um, you know, vote in, in the election. Well, I will then need to make, make a sample of the population. So I might, I might take 1,000 people out of the UK population. Now, the point is that we know that the, the people in the sample are the same kind of thing as the people in the population, in the, in the rest of the population. So, you know, somebody in the sample and somebody who is not in the sample are still sort of relevantly the same kind of thing. I mean, that, you know, so, so I mean, we, we will have to uh, obviously specify what it is we're trying to sample. I mean, you don't want to sample, you, you don't want to include a dog in the sample, for instance. You don't want to include a person who's below the, uh, the age of an eligible voter. Um, but you know, what, what, so what you have in the sample is a bunch of adult humans, uh, you, you know, who are eligible to vote, UK citizens, etc. And the point is that the same kind of thing is, is what is in the general population. So, you know, you similarly have adult humans who are eligible to vote, UK citizens who are not in the sample. But that doesn't seem to be what's going on in the case of the pendulum. So I can set the length at a certain value and... I can then try, let's say, 10 different values of the length. Now, these actual states of affairs, these are all you know, concrete states of affairs. But what about a, a length that is, uh, you know, covered by the model, but that I, I, I don't try, but that, you know, that, that I don't actualize? What about a length that is merely possible? Um, is that the same kind of thing? You know, is, is a merely possible length the same kind of thing as an actual length. I mean, it would seem intuitively not that that's not the case. Uh, in fact, one view on which uh, the merely possible states of affairs are the same kind of thing as actual states of affairs would be Lewisian modal realism. Uh, but you know, obviously that would be a commitment that most people want to avoid. I'm pretty sure that Gieri isn't a Lewisian modal realist. But, you know, if, if you are a Lewisian modal realist, then you, then you would say, well, yeah, you know, possible states of affairs are just the same kind of thing as actual states of affairs. So there really is a literal sense in which you can say that actual states of affairs are sampling possibilities. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I mean, if, if, if you have some other account of the metaphysics of modality, I'm not, I'm not sure in what sense any set of actual events could constitute a sample of the possibility space, because you know, actual events and uh, possible events are completely different things, um, or so it seems. Okay, a, th a third question about this account of uh, modality is we're not really sampling possibilities that correspond to the possibilities uh, of the model because the model includes various idealizing conditions. Uh, I mean, all, all scientific models are, are going to in involve a whole bunch of idealizations. So with, with the model of a pendulum, you know, you might, uh, you might assume that there's no friction or no air resistance uh, or, or whatever. But then how can we say, you know, what would happen in a world where there is no friction? In the real world, there's always friction, right? We, you know, we can never really sample uh, a frictionless system. We can never sample the states of a frictionless system. Um, so, I, I mean, consider uh, the arguments that some physicists have made that the universe is fine-tuned. Um, so the idea is that there are certain physical constants such that if they had had ever so slightly different values, the universe would be unable to support heavy elements or support complex structures. So, for instance, if the strong nuclear force were ever so slightly uh, greater, um, then all of the hydrogen would have fused shortly after the Big Bang. Um, 
So again, something, something along those lines. If these fine-tuning arguments are correct, then in a world where the strong nuclear force is slightly greater, nothing like our universe even exists. Um, so, so the point is that you know, this, this kind of slight change in the uh, kind of un underlying physics ends up producing massive changes in the, uh, the, the overall sort of structure of the universe. Now, obviously, a world which supports systems that have no friction, you know, fr frictionless systems, would be even stranger. So how could we know what would happen? You know, how could we know what the you know, length and period of a pendulum would be or how that would work in a world where, uh, where systems can be frictionless? Um, so even if uh, experiments do sample possibilities, these possibilities don't correspond to the possibilities in the model. So I guess it's, you know, I mean, at least initially, Gieri's view seems to make modality uh, epistemologically and metaphysically safe, you know, it takes the mystery out of modality, but actually uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure it does on reflection. Um, it, you know, it doesn't seem to make the, the, the epistemology and metaphysics of modality any less baffling because, you know, there's, there's, still, there's still a question of even if we do sample possibilities in the real system, how on earth does that connect up to what, to, to the sort of space of possibilities of the model, you know, gi given um, these sort of idealizing conditions in the, in the model. Uh, so, so given the fact that if there really were a frictionless system, actually it's not clear that we could say anything about you know what what that system would be would be like. Um, so I, I, yeah, I mean uh, anyway, that, those are just some some thoughts on uh, uh, Gieri's comments on modality. Um, unfortunately, he was very brief uh, in, in that particular article, didn't really say much about it, but, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting idea. Uh, finally, um, I just want to address, uh, I'm currently talking to a camera right now. Um, I usually do this on my phone, which is why it comes out vertical, and people have told me, hey, you should film these videos horizontally, not vertically. Now, I really would like to film it vertically because it annoys people. Um, but the, I, I was filming this video earlier and somebody rang me on my phone and then I, I checked the video and it had been like it been corrupted and it, it didn't work. So I thought, well, I'd better stop filming it on my phone. So I've got to film it on my camera, but it, it really irritates me that I have to do this because I, I really liked doing the vertical videos and knowing that it was making people, you know, that it was annoying people, knowing how much people hated vertical videos. I, it, it really gave me a warm glow in my heart uploading videos like that, but I guess they're going to have to be horizontal from now on. Okay, that's all.